Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Halloween horror movie review. Today, we'll be taking a look at 1994's Nadia, directed by Michael Almereda and executive produced by David Lynch. Yes, quite a good one, actually. Um, I have owned this one on Laserdisc for many, many years and always really enjoyed it. It was originally recommended to me by a co-worker when I worked at Chapters, a Canadian bookstore chain, and um, I managed to get the Laserdisc uh, kind of cheaply from eBay at the time and absolutely fell in love with it. It's a wonderful independent film uh, loosely based on Dracula's daughter, so it seemed like a good idea to do a review of this one the same day we review Dracula's daughter. So, Nadia, today on the Multimedia Chronicles. <laughs> back. So the beginning of Nadia has some pretty clear echoes of Dracula's daughter in it, uh, some of which are almost modernized versions of scenes straight out of Dracula's daughter. It starts off much like Dracula's daughter does with the death of Dracula and with Van Helsing being in trouble for the supposed murder of Dracula. Of course, nobody believes that, oh, he was a vampire because... You know, no one believes such things in these enlightened modern times. And much like in Dracula's Daughter, Nadia, not the Countess Maria Zaleska, she's Nadia in this one, uh, goes to the police station and steals the body and then cremates it. Keep a sharp eye out, by the way, for David Lynch in a cameo appearance as the police officer attending the morgue. Then we even have the scene of her playing the piano and talking about finally being free and so forth. So at first, anyone familiar with Dracula's Daughter would think, okay, this is kind of like a modern take on the same story. Aha! But then it goes in some very different directions. For Nadia is not an only child, as Maria Zaleska was. No, no, she actually has a twin brother named Edgar. Now Edgar, when we first meet him, is actually quite ill and bedridden, and one of the reasons is he's trying to overcome his vampiric nature. He wants to live a normal life. He's very much in love with the woman who is tending him, and she is also in love with him. They haven't really discussed it yet, but they've both developed very strong feelings for each other and just want to be together. Nadia, however, has her own evil plans. She lives more for her own interest, for her own pleasure, and and where Van Helsing gets drawn into the mix is Nadia ends up meeting Lucy, who is Van Helsing's nephew Paul's wife. <laughs> so they have an intimate moment together, and Lucy ends up being in the thrall of Nadia. So Paul is trying to snap her out of it, but Van Helsing is telling her, well, she's under the spell of a vampire. She's not just going to snap out of it. We have to destroy the vampire. And that's essentially the setup for the story. So it becomes about Van Helsing and Paul trying to track down Nadia, trying to see if they can break the spell that Lucy is under. Uh, in the meantime, uh, meeting up with Edgar, finding out what he's all about. And Edgar actually joins forces with Paul and Van Helsing against Nadia. Nadia does have an assistant in this, uh, who is Renfield, but he's not the Renfield that we know from Dracula. Um, he's a much more laid back, uh, ha has a very soft Irish accent, uh, but he is fiercely devoted to Nadia and will do anything for her and anything to protect her. So essentially what Nadia is, is it's a postmodern kind of deconstruction of the classic vampire story. There's a lot of moments in it that 
kind of echo classic vampire trope moments, if you will. Um, it also has a very kind of art house feel to it. Uh, it looks very art film in some of its uh, shots and uh, composition and filming style, but not to its detriment. I actually really like the look of this film, and I think some of the cinematography in it is quite beautiful. Um, there's some wonderful imagery such as there's one where Nadia is just kind of walking slowly down the street and contemplating and lighting a cigarette. And meanwhile, you see, uh, I think it's Paul and Van Helsing behind her, running almost in slow motion, trying to catch her. But she's just so indifferent. They're so beneath her. She doesn't even think twice about it. She just keeps carrying on about her business. But it's this beautiful shot where she's essentially walking in place against a rear projected backdrop. But there's just something kind of strange and haunting about it that works. And it just comes off as this kind of hallucinatory dreamlike moment. And there's a lot of moments like that in the movie. For example, uh, in terms of the production of it, they used uh, an old video camera that was actually put out by Fisher Price for children back in the 80s. Uh, I think it was called the Pixel Vision PXL 2000 or something like that. It was this thing here, this camera. And, and this camera would use audio cassettes instead of video cassettes. And it would give you this very pixelated black and white video. So they used this camera for any scenes that were in vampire vision, essentially, uh, or certain, sometimes in flashbacks and things like that. So key moments or horror moments were often filmed with this camera, which, again, give it kind of this strange hallucinatory quality. It's where you're, you're not seeing a lot of details, so your mind is left to fill in the blanks and fill in the additional information. And it's an interesting contrast from the regular black and white uh, film, which is quite crisp and very vibrant, uh, stark blacks and, and bright whites and just very beautiful. I would actually really like to see a Blu-ray of this. Uh, sadly, it's only available on DVD. And, uh, and it's actually a 4x3 letterbox DVD. If you watch this on VLC player, you choose the crop option, which is 16x10 instead of 16x9, because it does appear that this is actually in a 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio instead of the usual 185 or 178. So it's a little tech technical info for you there. Uh, so yeah, I watched it in 1610, and it appeared to have the full image area with no distortion and just little black bars on either side. So Nadia herself is played by actress Alina Lobenson, and I have to say she is absolutely mesmerizing in this. Um, she's had quite a lengthy film career, actually, if you go to her IMDb page. Um, I haven't seen anything else she's been in that I recall, but, uh, but this is definitely a standout performance. And she is so beautiful and sensual and hypnotic, really. Uh, you, you just can't take your eyes off her. I mean, even when she's just talking about the weather or what have you, I mean, she's just completely captivating. So uh, definitely some uh, fantastic casting there. I really like the actor they got to play Renfield as well. I thought he was a good counterpoint to, to Nadia, whereas Nadia is very kind of introspective and and thoughtful and philosophical a lot of the time uh renfield just kind of hangs back and he's always very attentive but also very quiet and listens and always pays rapt attention to her and just instinctively knows what her needs are and tends to them as as she requires him uh, so this isn't the same kind of manic, crazy, loopy Renfield that we've seen before. No, it's more akin to the character of Sandor from uh, from Dracula's Daughter, and that's clearly what it's meant to echo, be kind of an amalgamation of aspects of those characters. Much as Sandor did with the Countess Zaleska in Dracula's Daughter, Renfield does in this, in that Nadia is talking about being free now that Dracula is dead, and how with Lucy... She's found love in a way that she hasn't felt for a long time, possibly ever. But Renfield isn't buying it. He thinks that she's just distracting herself from what she really is. Edgar, on the other hand, doesn't see her as anything other than what she is. I mean, he, he is her twin, so he knows her intimately well. 
and he knows that she's only out for herself, that she is essentially pure evil, and that the only way that he will ever know peace is to destroy her, which is why he teams up with Van Helsing and Paul to uh, help them to destroy her and also to help them to get Lucy back. So he's he is actually a good vampire. Like he genuinely wants to do good and doesn't want to kill anybody. Uh, he just lives on plasma supplements and to to you know quench his vampiric thirst. Uh, but otherwise just wants to live a normal life. Also, much like in Dracula's Daughter, when Nadia cremates Dracula's body, uh, she does allude to the fact that she's now free. Uh, but whereas in Dracula's Daughter, where she, she made that distinction, feeling that if she killed Dracula, she would be free, as in free of the curse and free to not be a vampire anymore. In this one, she means it more literally, where she's free and that she's no longer under her father's thumb. So she's now effectively the head of the family. And I guess knowing that Edgar would have a similar claim, being her twin, um, she wants to make sure that he's not going to stand in her way. So... It's an interesting case of sibling rivalry between vampire siblings. Um, also, in the case of Dracula's daughter, it was more a case of Dracula had turned her at some point, a hundred years in the past. In the case of Nadia, it's very clear that Dracula actually fell in love and had children with a human woman. Their mother actually died in childbirth, and Dracula just kind of abandoned the children. But, so, it, it's a little hazy as to the details of what happened, whether it was they were normal until they grew up and then they became vampires, or if they were always vampires and then just grew to a certain point and stopped. They don't really go into too much detail about it, other than they were the product of Dracula's love for this woman. So it's quite an interesting story, I gotta say, and it, it always draws me in every time I watch it. Um, I watched the Laserdisc, I don't know how many times when I first got it, and uh, since getting the DVD, I've even watched this like two or three times, and uh, I only bought it about a year or so ago. And I love it. I think it's a great film and definitely uh, a worthy addition to anyone's vampire collection. I need to mention one performance in particular is the other absolute standout performance in this, and that is Peter Fonda as Van Helsing. Ugh. He is so much fun to watch as Van Helsing. Because he, he plays him as he, he's a little bit overly focused on the mission while at the same time being a bit scatterbrained and a bit of a hippie. <laughs> so kind of all these things mixed together. It is such a fun version of that character, this modern-day hippie Van Helsing. It's great, and just seeing some of the looks that Paul gives him as he's going off on one of his diatribes and... Uh, you, you just got to see it. I mean, if nothing else, see it for Peter Fonda as Van Helsing because uh, he is an absolute delight in the role and uh, and definitely one of the reasons I keep coming back to it. Just, like, laugh out loud funny sometimes. He was clearly having an absolute blast with that character. Alrighty, so that is it for me to you for now. So if you'd like to add Nadia to your collection, I'll include an Amazon link in the description for you. Alrighty, well thank you very much for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to catch me on Twitch. I stream just about every day, and I'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another Halloween horror movie review. It's really awkward. Today we'll be taking a look at Nadia. Uh, Today, there's some pretty clear echoes and parallels 
there's some pretty clear echoes to and parallels of yep echoes of and parallels to not echoes to and parallels of there's some pretty clear echoes to and parallels of Dracula's daughter uh, it begins much like Dracula's daughter does with the fucking stuff happening for Nadia is not an only child she actually has a twin brother by who goes for Nadia is actually not an only child as the uh, as blah, 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 blah. so it's quite an interesting bit alrighty well that is it from me to you for now so hope you enjoyed thank you very much for watching if you'd like to add Nadia to your collection I will of course include an Amazon link in the description below uh, if there's any better editions that have come out since I fucking fuck fuck fuckity fuck 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 so fuck off